and welcome to the Jedi Shelf. This is my new YouTube video channel where I will be reviewing books that I have read. Because how else am I supposed to review them? So, uh, my name's Kaylee, and I'm going to start off this video with five books that I've read that I liked. First off, let's see, I'm going to go with. Yeah, I'm going to go with The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Fedor. This book, it's a, like a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland, only not like you've ever known it before. Not like the original series, like the, by, um, the, by the original series bleh, by Lewis Carroll or the cartoon version, this, the old Disney one. The closest thing I can say that I've ever seen that was like The Looking Glass Wars were the two Alice in Wonderland movies with Johnny Depp. But even those don't compare, don't compare at all to The Looking Glass Wars because it's, it's, it's amazing. The way it's written, you're just, you're tossed into this fantasy world where nothing is as it seems. What you think and what you expect to be isn't at all what it's, you thought it was. Uh, I don't want to give away too many, I want to say too much because I might give away spoilers and that would, wouldn't be good because then you don't already know what would happen in the book or what might happen when you read it and I don't want to be one of those people who tells you what happens and then you read it and you're like, oh man, I saw it coming. I want to just figure it out on my own. So, yeah, but I will tell you that it's amazingly written. Just amazing. And it has sort of visual effects, sort of. In my head, I can see everything happening and it's like, whoa, this is awesome. But I'm not actually seeing anything with my eyes. I'm seeing it all with well, I am kind of seeing it with my eyes because I'm, like, reading it. But it's, like, my mind, my mind seeing it. My eyes don't actually perceive it, if that makes any sense. I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, next up on my list, The Lost World by Michael Crichton. Now, if you look this book up, you want to look up The Lost World by Michael Crichton because there's two books called The Lost World. So just make sure you look up the one Michael Crichton if you want to read this one. As the cover suggests, it is about dinosaurs. Uh, it's actually a sequel to Michael Crichton's other book, Jurassic Park, which I, I also like. But you know, I only have a little, I only five books per video. So yeah, only five books. He'll be in the next video maybe. Anyway, uh, the Lost World. Oh, I just I love dinosaurs. I mean. I love fantasy things, but I, I just, I love dinosaurs. I don't know what it is about them that's so amazing. Maybe it's the fact that they're, like, mysterious. We haven't seen them. We just see them in movies. Do they actually look like T-Rex? Do they actually look like the Velociraptor? Or, like, all scaly and dark-colored? Or were they neon orange or something? Probably not neon orange, but you, know, you never know. Anyway, The Lost World, oh, it was amazing. From the first page, I was like, oh, yes, Lost World, more about Ian Malcolm, who's a character from the Jurassic Park, who I thought died, and he didn't, which is great. Now, that was not a spoiler, because if you watch the movies, he also didn't die in the movies, so, yeah, not spoilers. Okay, yeah, I'm going to continue. The Lost World is amazing. This an island of dinosaurs, Yiki Mayhem. People who go to the island, some of them with research intent, some of them with not so good intent, and some of them with a rescue in mind. What happens when they all meet? Lots of mayhem, lots of dinosaurs, lots of fighting with both dinosaurs and humans, and some drama that ensues. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, but yeah, I would highly recommend it. It was one of my favorite books. I liked it more than Jurassic Park, to be honest. Okay, also, uh, The Lost World, the beginning part in the second movie is different than the beginning part in the book. So, yes. Okay, I'm gonna do The Last Unicorn next. Now, I know what you're thinking, that's not a book. This is a movie, and you're right. What I'm holding in my hand is, in fact, a movie, a Blu-ray movie. Well, it's Blu-ray and DVD, but that's beside the point. 
this movie is based off a book which I have read. I just don't have a physical copy of it because I rented it at the library and then I read it in a day and then returned it so I don't actually own a copy but I am looking to get one. So hopefully at some point I will own it. Now The Last Unicorn I consider it to be a classic. I know it's not always not it's it's not considered one not necessarily because it's not really old enough to be a classic, I guess. Uh, but I consider it to be one. It's it's amazingly written. Just oh, it's beautifully written. And it's about a unicorn who goes on a quest to find other unicorns. But it's not just like oh, she just goes on a quest to see who else is out there. She thinks it's she's heard that there's an, she's the last one. Now if she's the last unicorn. It raises the question, what happened to all the other unicorns? And she goes on a quest to find them. And on this quest, she encounters wizards, witches, uh, curses, harpies, and lots of other things, including the Red Bull. Famous Red Bull you see him right there. Yeah, looks pretty terrible, right? <laughs> um, it was amazing. And I just, I loved it. It went so deep into everything. Like, it's not just about the story of the unicorn, it's about her and all the side characters. It goes into, into, uh, it goes, delves deep into what the other characters, who the other characters are and what they've gone through. And it just, it went, it resonated with me. So I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. And there's two versions, there's a regular one and there's an extended one. I have not read the extended one to my knowledge but I think I have read the regular one. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. Okay, going, moving on. Uh, Mary Jane by Judith O'Brien. Now Mary Jane, oh, oh yes, wait. The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. Just had to say that. He also helped write, this. he also wrote the script for the movie, The Last Unicorn. Okay, going back to this. Mary Jane by Judith O'Brien. So something you should note about me, I love Spider-Man. Not like, oh, I'm in love with Spider-Man, but I love the character and like the comics and the movies and the TV shows and the books and all that and the action figures. Oh, I love playing with the action figures. It's so much fun. It's just like, oh, Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, I, know, I just don't have one in my hand right now. Uh, anyway, so Mary Jane, it was amazing. Just, I loved it. The way it was written, it was, it was just beautifully written. It's from a narrator's perspective. But it centers around the life of Mary Jane rather than Peter Parker, so we know exactly what Mary Jane's thinking, uh, what she's doing, what she knows, and all that, but we don't know what everyone else is thinking. Uh, well, you're getting a little bit of an English lesson here. here. This is it's narrative. Yeah, it's a limited narration, basically, but moving on. What I really like about this book was that it, it touches a bit on body image. And yeah, that's how I felt when I read it. Like, Mary Jane's worried about what these other people are thinking. Like, she's like, oh, are these so-and-so judging me because of the way I'm dressed? Is this person judging me because of the way I'm dressed or how I look, my makeup, my hair, all that, right? And I felt, uh, I connected with her so much because at the time I read it, I was feeling kind of bad about myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so short. My hair is just like, pfft. I can't do anything with it. It's just all thin and straight and whatnot. Not curly or floofy like anyone else, like other people. It's just flat, like that, right? I have an acne and all this, and I was like, oh my gosh, I do not like the way I look. I don't like this about me, right? And after I read Mary Jane, I was like, wait a minute. This is how she thinks other people, she thinks other people are worried about what they look like. Well, she knows other people worry, worry about what they look like because she was one of those uh, popular kids, she used to be, one of those really popular kids who people were always worried about. Uh, and then she kind of got to the other side and she's like, oh, hey, we both worry about this, so maybe I've been putting a bit too big a deal on it. And she goes through something, she makes some wrong choices when she tries to deal with this, the way she views her body. Uh, and when you read it, um, I do not suggest doing what she did at all. So, yeah. 
but thankfully she had Peter Parker in there to help her, and this does have Spider-Man in it. It's not all, it's just not just about Mar MJ herself, it is about Peter Parker and Spider-Man and what he's going through. Part of what I like about this is this, it doesn't just center on Spider-Man and oh, all about Spider-Man, all about Peter Parker. Not that I don't love that character, he's awesome, he reminds me a lot of myself, and I feel like if I was bitten by a radioactive spider, I'd probably do what he did. Uh, before I went on the right track. So, yeah. Um, moving on. Uh, anyway, I like Mary Jane because it's about more than just Peter Parker. It goes into the other characters' lives, uh, as well as Mary Jane's. It's mostly Mary Jane's. Okay, last book on the video. I Am Number Four by Pitticus Lore. Now, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It's, that's how it looks like it's spelled, Pitticus Lore. Pitticus, Pitticus. Sounds like Spartacus or something. Anyway, uh, I am number four. I love this book. It's like Men in Black and Spider-Man and Superman all combined into one. So, like Spider-Man because he's a teenager, like Superman because he has superpowers, and like Men in Black because there's aliens, only it's not from the Men in Black's pers pers perspective, but from the aliens' perspective. So, as you may have guessed, this guy right here, he's an alien from outer space, and his planet was destroyed, again, like Superman. So, he gets to Earth, he's been raised there to stay away from these other aliens that destroyed his planet, and at the time this book takes place, he's in his teenage years, he's getting older, he's getting tall, he's waiting for his powers to kick in, right, and he moves to a small town. In this town, he finds love, makes friends, and of course his powers decide to manifest themselves. So it goes like from, oh, it's great, regular life, regular life, <laughs> everything goes downhill, sort of. Like, yeah, things go downhill, but they also have their uphills every now and again. I'm not gonna tell you everything that happens in there. Cause, yeah, I don't wanna spoil it, but oh, it was amazing. Like, I loved it. I couldn't put it down once I really got into it. and. Yeah, that was awesome. So those have been my five books and sort of movie uh, for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think I mentioned before my channel is called The Jedi Shelf. I do plan on doing Star Wars books eventually once I finish one. I have lots of books started. I have to like read multiple books at a time because for some reason if I just concentrate on just one, uh, I just can't. I have to have other things. So, yeah, when I do uh, finish a Star Wars one, I'll post it, I promise, okay? Okay, also you should note about me, I'm big Marvel and DC fan and Men in Black, obviously, as well as Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else, I, dinosaurs, yes, dinosaurs, Jurassic Park series, Jurassic World series, so many other things I love. Uh, you'll probably hear about them in other videos, and I think I should probably stop it now because I'm just rambling on now. Uh, remember, you were all beautifully and wonderfully made. Love yourself. Live long and prosper, and may the force be with you.